Hey, this is Neil Ronahan, and I'm joined by John Raritan. Hello! And we're with Nintendo World Report, Nintendo World Report TV, and we're going to talk about Star Fox 2, which is a brand new video game in 2017. <laughs> uh, it's out on the Super Nintendo Classic, which, by the time you're listening to this, is mere days away, but I'm speaking from the exalted place of having uh, played a whole bunch of the final retail version of Star Fox 2 on the Super Nintendo Classic. And, John, you are our resident Star Fox super fan. Uh, you have extensively played the Star Fox 2 beta. There's even some footage of that up here on this very channel. Uh, and, and yeah, now we're gonna, we're gonna talk about Star Fox 2. So, John, I guess, how about you start it off by talking about, you know, what you have learned about Star Fox 2 in its beta form and what your expectations were and are for the Super Nintendo Classic release. So, I, um, I discovered the Star Fox 2 beta, it would have been in like 2010, 2011, I don't remember when it leaked, um, but sometime back then, and, uh, I, I played through it in a single sitting with my brother, and thought it was just, like, like, the thing that struck me about it immediately is that this is an extremely ambitious game. Like, it, it, even if this, like, the game design of Star Fox 2, if that were to come out in a modern game today, people would say, like, wow, there, you do a lot of different things in that game. It feels um, like it's, it's similar to what a lot of indie games are doing now. Like, I mean, we've had, we've had a, a nice assortment of, of nindies throughout the uh, past number of months on the Nintendo Switch, but Star Fox 2 is kind of a roguelike. Yeah. Like, not not exactly, like, but, but it's got a lot of those elements during a time when that wasn't in the mainstream at all. Yeah, which, I mean, I think that kind of comes from the... I mean, because the original Star Fox is very much an arcade game. Like, it's all about getting a high score. Yeah. And so I think that translates well to that roguelike style. And then Star Fox 2 has the advantage of certain elements of it, and I don't know how many times you've replayed it and how much you've picked up on this, but certain elements um, are randomly generated. Yeah. So there, it's going to be di a little bit different every time you play through it. The scenario setup is generally the same based on difficulty, um, but but specific enemy layouts and base layouts are all random, and like what bosses show up is all random. So I, I have noticed that the it seems like like on easy mode, which is the one that, like I've, I've run through easy mode like four or five times now. Uh, that seems to not like the differences there are that like there's well, I guess backing up slightly. Uh, the way the game is structured is that you're kind of set up. You, you start from Corneria uh, and across the map presented like how Star Fox maps have been presented for a long time. Um, across the map, there's Andros's ship. Uh, and he's basically attacking Corneria. He's attacking planets nearby. Uh, those are those are levels that you can go to, um, and then you know liberate them from Andros. Also, in space, you can run into fighter pilots and missiles and viruses and m big bosses. Fight the members of Star Wolf. Uh, so the the way the game goes is that you have a timer that kind of as more time passes, different elements are moving in the overworld, and you can go into these missions and and. And whether it's a, a full level or just fighting a couple fighters in space, uh, it's it's very quick moving because you always need to pay attention to that timer. Because as that timer goes, then more things are heading towards Corneria. Corneria starts at zero percent. If it gets to a hundred percent, you lose. Uh, but what I go, but going back to what I was saying on easy mode is that I noticed that easy mode does seem to kind of follow the same patterns. And the different levels, like on the different planets, uh, you know, uh, Fortune is there. I think what Eldara, uh, Venom shows up. What are the other? Uh, Macbeth, um, Titania. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, a lot. I think a, that's all. Yeah. Yeah, Medium. a lot of. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of tropey planets from from Star Fox lore uh, all show up here. But those are kind of the full featured levels. But even those, it's like everything isn't it's more of an all range mode Star Fox game there's not a lot of like all right go down this rail shooting hall it's a lot more exploration based a lot more puzzle solving although not not really anything too crazy it does get a little a little more nuts on expert mode but easy mode's a lot of just kind of like uh go step on the switch and then you'll open the way to get down to the base and then blow up the core on that planet 
Yeah, and I mean, there's even like on expert mode, you even get into like some some basic like 3D platforming. Yeah, yeah, which I not a fan. <laughs> there's I don't know what planet it's on, but there's a switch elevated over lava that you have to like jump to. That's even I, that's in hard mode too. I think. It okay, yeah. It's it's yeah. one of the planets. There's like a floating platform with a switch on it over lava. There's also one over water. Ugh. Uh, the, the that's water. so that level is so cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. The what is that? Is that Eldara? I don't okay. know. They messed up all of the names. Yeah. And yeah, I don't so, think they fixed it for the final version. Okay. Like so none there, of the planets have the right names based on how they look. So there's a there's a water planet, a water level that you go to it and you can go underwater, um, which which is pretty pretty neat. Um, but you need to hit switches. One of them's on a boat that's moving. Yeah. So. You switch between the the R wing and the walker, and to hit that switch, you basically just need to like break and slow down and hit select to switch it to the walker right on top of the boat, which is really finicky and hard, especially when there's like you know a little bit of it's not it doesn't have a perfect frame rate, like it's pretty good, but like it's it's not not one hundred percent. It's do yeah. it it is taxing the Super Nintendo uh, to the nth degree. Like yes. this it. This game does feel like it's barely holding together graphically, but it all works. And it, I mean, it. I think it, it looks better than the the first Super Nintendo one. It's definitely doing way crazier stuff. Like it's. Oh yeah. It's miraculous that it runs on the Super the, Nintendo. It does not run amazingly well, but it runs well enough. The first one fakes a lot of its like 3D stuff. Um, like a lot of times what you see as the ground and as the sky is actually just one picture and the bottom half is green and the top half is blue and they put some dots over it to make it look like it's coming toward you. Yeah. Um, Star Fox 2 doesn't pull any of that crap. It is it is a fully polygonal 3D game, which is insane. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a weird, beautiful looking game. Uh, I... I really like it, but the weird thing about it, and I, re I realized I just referred to the normal mode as easy mode, um, which really, yeah. maybe the normal mode in this game should be called easy mode. So I, I, I got the Super Nintendo Classic, sat down to play Star Fox 2, you know, real excited, uh, finished normal mode in, in like sub half hour. Yeah. It's very straightforward, like you basically just have to go through, there's like two planets you need to beat, uh, there's two battleship carriers that you need to beat, and then you, you go and, and you take down, you, you save the galaxy. Uh, we're, we're still lightly embargoed, I can't talk about the final <laughs> boss. That was a um, good, good event. Yeah, um, so I beat, I beat normal mode in like a half an hour, I was like, well, okay, alright, I guess, I guess that's Star Fox 2. And I saw that there was a hard mode and an expert mode, you have to, you have to beat hard mode to unlock expert mode. But I played through hard mode, and like, Everything got way more complicated. There was a lot more going on. There was a lot more management of like trying to, you know, go to this planet and and go beat this level. But oh no, there's missiles coming for Cornelia. I have to double back, take out this missile so I don't take any damage. And after a few runs through hard mode, I kind of got the hang of that. I was able to to beat hard mode without Cornelia taking any damage, which made me feel very very smug and and happy. Uh, and yeah, and trying expert mode. Expert mode's really hard. <laughs> yes. Like uh, I've I've gotten to the back half of it a few times, but but there's yeah they, they throw a lot at you. So in the normal mode, like halfway through, uh, Andros will throw like a big mid boss at you, and in there it'll just be the Mirage Dragon. Which if you've seen the intro to Star Fox Two, that's that that weird looking snake that shows up at the beginning of that and just tears through our wings. Um, so that's the mid-boss there, but then when you get to the higher difficulty levels, there's the possibility for different mid-bosses, and multiple mid-bosses. And I round up in expert mode, where I had some moments where, uh, both, uh, so, so Andros will throw the two mid-bosses at you at the same time, and they will come hurtling through space, <laughs> looking, looking to kill you. Um, I got stuck in a fight with one of them, and then backed out of it, and oh no, one of the guys from Star Wolf just randomly appeared, and then promptly killed me. Uh, you only have, so you go out, you've got, you've got two, you've got two pilots that you can take with you. Um, it's, it's Fox Falco, Peppy Slippy, and then Faye and Miu. Yep. Um, which is a dog and a cat, right? Yeah. I, a lynx? Fox, I don't know what, yeah, yeah. I don't know what Miu is A feline to be. creature and a dog. Yeah, um, I'm sure. I'm sure there's some Star Fox fan communities and fan fictions that would be more than happy 
to tell yeah. me all about Mew, but let's <laughs> not go there. But so so you have you, you pick two of those. You'll have like a main one and then a wingman. Really, all that does is uh, with a press of a button on the overall map, you can switch between them. Uh, they have different health that stays throughout every mission. So you will often probably want to go back to the mothership, which you can then teleport to different planets as you free them. And then that's where you can heal. Um, but like, for example, like Fox and Falco are kind of balanced. Um, Peppy and Slippy have more defense, but are slower. And uh, Faye and Miyu like are kind of, if you can play Faye and Miyu really well, you can do some amazing stuff. But on expert mode, they seem very weak because they have the lowest amount of shields. But they also have, the, the, they're the fastest and they have the quickest, quickest firepower. And they have they have twin lasers. Yeah, default. yeah, they start All off the with twin lasers. Have to earn those. Yeah. Um, I will say, if you can get good with Fey and Mew, they are who I play. Like for expert mode, I just play Fey and Mew. That's see, see, that's my, my my first couple runs through expert mode. I was I just went with Peppy and Slippy because I needed the shields, um, yep. and then I realized that that was it was kind of useless as it was going to some of the, like when when I started hitting those runs of different bosses. And, and all the members of Star Wolf coming at me, I, I realized that, like, okay, these guys are too slow. Um, yep. So so I started uh, using using Fox and, and Peppy or Slippy, or, or Fox or Falco and Peppy and Slippy, but I do kind of want to get better with Faye and Miyu. Um, I've, I, when I've gone, th I think I might go through hard mode a couple more times and <laughs> kind, of, kind of train up before I take on Expert. Uh, but... I mean, just the fact that I'm talking about how I want to replay this game is, is, is something that I think highlights how effective this kind of weird, this weird conglomerate of this game is, is because there is enough of a random element from playthrough to playthrough that it's a lot more engaging than just like, I don't know, replaying Star Fox 64 and like looking for a secret exit to, to take a different path. Like this, not, not the different that you path can't play. Not that you can't play Star Fox 64 for like 20 years and have it still be good. I mean, Star Fox 64 <laughs> is an excellent game. So is Star Fox, um, the original one on Super Nintendo, which you can also play in the Super Nintendo Classic uh, for the first time since it came out. Um, well, I guess you could have played it on your Super Nintendo if you had it when it first came out. But this is the first time it was re-released. Witchcraft. But it's just that like in every other Star Fox game, a lot of those changes in paths was very binary. It was kind of like, okay, you're in this level. If you do this, you'll go to a different level. Whereas in this, like, you make your own path. Like, mm -hmm. it's it's kind of frustrating playing this game because if this game came out, I think that Star Fox would be a much better and probably longer lasting franchise. Uh, it, which I guess I mean it, it has kind of, it has lasted like there was a new one last year that no one really liked. Well, the fascinating thing is that they didn't release this game, but then post Star Fox sixty four, kind of went down the development path as if they had. Yeah, because they because they paid homage to it with Star Fox Command, where we're Dylan Cuthbert, who who was you know lead program or his lead designer on this game. Uh, Dylan Cuthbert came back and worked on Star Fox Command, kind of using a lot of influence from what he did on Star Fox 2. And then Star Fox Zero, like, it's it was weird playing Star Fox Zero in the past year and then playing Star Fox 2 because it's like, I'm playing a game that influenced a game that I played last year, except for I didn't really have any legal opportunity to ever play this game before. Right. It just It's a weird feeling, but like, the, I think the thing that kind of makes me so frustrated is that I think Star Fox 2 is better than Star Fox Zero. Like, I agree. It is a far more interesting game, and I don't I don't think that Star Fox Zero is is a bad game at all. I know, I mean, you and I are 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 pretty pretty we on are, the level when it comes to Star Fox. We are both of we are both of that game's fans. Yeah, yeah, we're we're all two all of two them. of them. Yep. <laughs> yeah, like I, I wrote a review for Star Fox Zero last year. I gave it an eight out of ten, and I still stand by that. I think. I think the control method's kind of neat. Like, it's not a perfect game, but it's it's fun. And I think Star Fox 2 is, is, a, is a better game than that because it takes so many risks, it does so many crazy things. And I think that in the modern context, it might not stand up quite as well as it would have if it released in 1996. And I, and I think, kind of look, thinking at it, Nintendo probably made the right call in not releasing this because if this came out on Super Nintendo in 1996 and Star Fox 64 came out, on N64 in 1998, I don't think that people would like Star Fox 64 as much. 
No, because it's a step backwards. Yeah, because Star Fox yeah. 64 is basically like a straight remake of Star Fox and Super Nintendo, whereas Star Fox 2 is a bold, crazy new take on the series. What's, what's crazy? I mean, like, Star Fox Command is kind of the easy comparison, because that one is, like, the whole point of Star Fox Command is to kind of remake Star Fox 2, but they didn't do it right like it's it's a very watered down Star Fox 2 like if you didn't like Star Fox Command still play Star Fox 2 because it is a way better game yeah um, I, I'm I've been curious to revisit Star Fox Command because I played it shortly after it came out and wasn't as wild into it I I think I what I wanted was Star Fox 2 to be honest yeah. but I think yeah. that I think that if I went back to Star Fox Command now I might like it a lot more than I did you know 10 years ago yeah but even in um even in like Star Fox Assault, like I realized this once I, once I got really into like Star Fox Two and started playing through it on expert mode and like doing different combinations of characters and got really obsessed with it. Then going back to even like Star Fox Assault, and I'd get into like the ground missions. Oh my where you'd god! Start off and it get and it's like it give you five targets and you defeat these five targets. And I was oh like, my god. holy crap! This is Star Fox 2. You're witnessing this like, live. I didn't. That didn't tell me. Yeah, and it, it made me like I went from being like Star Fox Assault. That's a cool game to like I freaking love Star Fox Assault. I mean, I, 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 already, I already like Star Fox Assault a great deal, but like I did not make the connection. Go back and play it now, cause it. Holy crap! Like, and it, it made me like, cause now in my head, Star Fox Assault is this incredible kind of midpoint between Star Fox and Star Fox 2. I'm just picturing, like, whatever producer from Nintendo that was on that game that, that assuredly probably had a hand in Star Fox 2 is just, like, telling Bandai Namco, like, when they're making Star Fox Assault, being like, oh, yeah, do this like we did in Star Fox 2. And, like, the team at Bandai Namco is just like, what the hell are you talking what? about? <laughs> yeah. And, it, and I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if everybody who's worked on a Star Fox game since Star Fox 2 came out, like, Nintendo's just like, all right, you just have to play this because this is what we want you to do. Well, every, every Star Fox game, with the exception of Star Fox 64, every Star Fox game that's come out since Star Fox 2 has had some element of Star Fox 2 implanted into it. Star Fox Adventures is a stretch, um, but Star Fox 2 has Zelda dungeons. Yeah. That's the bases and the carriers, especially once you get into Expert and they get way more complex. Yep. They're just primitive 3D Zelda dungeons. So we'll link that to Star Fox Adventures. You have ground missions you and even, stuff on Assault. Like you even have you have maps. You need to like unlock doors by completing puzzles. Like yeah, it's it's it, this game's so ambitious. It is. It's still it's, it, it's still impressive now. Yeah, that's <laughs> well, that's that's what I'm saying is like if if you put this game design like instead of just releasing this, they could have just like put this design into a new engine. And called it a new game, and we would have been none the wiser. Yeah, like yeah. because that's that's not what Star Fox Command is. To be clear, like that's Star Fox Command is very simplified. It's just the flying around and shooting fighters. Yeah. It took probably, out the cruisers probably, and the bases and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean basically Star Fox Command is is probably the least interesting parts of Star Fox Two. It's all the parts that were left because all the other games. They forgot about the walker and saved that for Star Fox Zero, yeah. but all the other games had already used all the interesting parts of Star Fox 2. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 like, I, I, I have not sat down to, like, kind of gather my thoughts for, for my review, um, which we'll have, we'll have two of them. Um, there will be one from me going up when you hear this video, and there will be one from John, uh, probably, what, Friday or Saturday? Uh, probably, yeah. Mine will be granted more focus toward like the differences between the beta it'll kind of have that perspective yeah and for just me like that's... i i didn't really do it on purpose but i just never really looked that much into star fox 2 and and almost went into playing it blind like I'm... i i knew it had some weird roguelike stuff and like it had some map stuff but i didn't i didn't know it was this and i'm very jealous of you i'm, I'm sorry like like i am <laughs> i am inherently like because when i look at this game a lot of what I'm looking at in the final version is stuff like like changes in background textures or little gameplay changes yeah. which we can we can talk about um and and I don't get like like you get this like experience of like seeing this you know 22 year old game for the first time in 2017 and that is I mean a lot of people will get that and that's awesome yeah and I'm excited to see what I'm, I'm fascinated to know what people will think of this game from a modern context. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it really is. It it reminds me a lot of of like roguelike games that are coming out on the Switch right now. Mm-hmm. Like it has like a setup. Like it it would be pretty smart for a, a an indie developer to just be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna make this space game. You gotta go to different planets. You gotta fight planetary bases. Like I would play that game. Wink, wink. Well, it would be smart for Nintendo to just, assuming this does well and is well received, to kind of expand on this idea further. Yeah, yeah. I would like to see that. Even even with Zero being a little bit of a bomba, I would like them to see make a uh, make more Star Fox too, please. Yep. So I guess is there anything else? I mean, it, I think it's worth touching on the the whole lock on stuff. So yeah, some little gameplay. Yes, yeah, as, as far as I can tell, uh, in in the beta there was a lock on where like you would go against a boss or the members of Star Wolf and dogfights, and you would automatically lock onto them. As... It was, it was a charge like a charge. Oh, okay, lock-on. okay. So like like, like in it, Star it, Fox sixty four. Exactly. Yep. So, I have not noticed that happening at all when I've been playing this game. So you do the charge shot, but you need to line up your charge shot. And it makes it a lot harder, like yes. like way harder. Like I I find myself having a lot more trouble with dogfights because of that. Because you you lose that that ease of access with the with the charge shots and the lock on, lock on. But but that's not in the final game, which that seems to be the biggest gameplay difference. Yes, and that, I mean that is a huge like that because that's that's definitely that is a change that only serves to make the game more difficult. Yeah. And it's not like expert mode was easy. Yeah, expert mode like is, is is very hard to begin with. And even I mean those those Star Wolf fights, even on easy mode, like in the there's a comparison video up on the channel right now for Star Fox Two, and it, it's me playing the beta and Neil playing the final version, and Pigma shows up. I kill him in two shots because yeah. I do two charge shots on him and he's down. And then my video freezes while Neil goes on for like <laughs> another minute fighting pigment like it's a it's a huge change yeah. to how that game plays and and it, i was also like, that was also at a point when i was playing it and i didn't realize that charge shots were that dramatically better like i think oh it's yeah, something they're, that they're like way better <laughs> i think charge shots are like what they're they're 10 times the amount of a normal shot or something right like yeah that. you can on easy mode you can take out half of a star wolf ship with one shot yeah um and and the thing is like it's not just like oh well it takes me a little bit longer to fight them in that game that time is is real time so if you're spending longer fighting this boss there are missiles moving towards corn area while you're doing that yep like they don't stop while you're fighting yeah so like that's a huge like there's a strategic element that that changes too as far as deciding like should i spend time doing this or do i need to go do this first like it does it changes the way you play the game yeah there's there's like an ebb and flow as as you especially as you get to the higher difficulty levels where you kind of need to lead let certain things go past you yeah. and and like i started getting into the habit of kind of bailing mid-mission on certain things because i'm like oh no i need to get out like those fighters are just gonna really mess up corneria right now i need to go take them out have you uh have you noticed and this is one of the coolest little things about the game uh when you land on a planet like while you're still on the surface if if there's a missile countdown going on that planet, then there will be a missile under construction on the surface. Yep, yep, and you can and blow up you, the missile. Yeah, and then even if you exit out, like that missile's gone. Yeah. Like Oh that is, really? Yeah, so you can like you can go to a planet, blow up the missile, and leave. <laughs> like that's a valid strategy. And like yeah. the fact that that's in there is there's so much like consistency. I love it. Yeah. I mean it's it's really it's like our it's a real time strategy game in a way. Yeah, like this is I haven't I haven't played anything like this. No, and it's crazy because a bunch of people made this game 22 years ago, and they didn't make anything like this again. And I don't know why. And it it really bothers me. Yeah, I'm I'm very happy for all those guys. Yeah, that, yeah. That this I, I, game is coming out. I if 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 you are if your heart is warmed by the existence of Star Fox 2, go try to find some of the pictures from when they announced the Super Nintendo Classic where a bunch of the guys who worked on this game went out and had, like, a launch party. Right, because they didn't even know that it was happening. Yeah. I, I imagine, like, maybe, like, because I think uh, Katsuya Gucci, who 
he's high ranking at Nintendo now. He probably right. knew, but like Dylan Cuthbert, yeah. for example, who's not at Nintendo anymore, he had no idea. Yeah, and I, th- and I think there might have been a couple other people who are still at Nintendo who might not have known the full extent of what was happening. Yeah, but yeah, I I don't know if I have that much more to say. I'm I'm sure we're going to be talking about this game for a while, at least until Super Mario Odyssey comes out. Like, I'll be talking about it. For, yeah, I'm I'm still talking about the beta. So yeah, although it's weird, I'll say this: it's weird that Andrew from Star Wolf is in this game, but his name is Algy. Wait, what? So, so there's Andrew from Star Wolf. His name is A L G Y, Algy, or something. They. That was not in the beta. Granted, the beta was fan translated, from, from, so I, everyone I, probably I, translated it based on 64. I did a little homework. Um, that's in 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 the Japanese version of the beta. He he was A L G Y Algy. That's that's really fascinating that they didn't change that that would be like them leaving andros as andorf <laughs> like that that is odd. also also this was uh, apparently localized by uh, marcus lindblom um who uh who also localized earthbound well, there you go um so that so that's why um the, the new age retro hippie is is a bit possible <laughs> but yeah that's uh that's star fox 2 Get, get hyped for a lot of Star Fox 2 coverage in the coming days and weeks and years. And, uh, support us on Patreon, www.patreon.com slash NWR. Uh, subscribe, like, do all that stuff with this channel and this video. Uh, yeah, we'll be, we'll be bringing you more Super Nintendo Classic footage. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that we already have up. And uh, we'll always have a lot of Nintendo things here. So, thank you so much for listening and watching. And we'll all... Uh, We'll, we'll see you in in uh, the Lilat system in the near future. Bye. Bye. <laughs>